Hi everyone, today's lesson is all about takeaway, the start of the golf swing. In general terms, mostly the first point of breakdown in people's golf swings. We're gonna look at a great way of making sure you start the swing correctly, you start the swing like most of the great players in the world to allow you to have the best opportunity to continue that swing in that vein so there's less compensation in your golf swing. P2, or the takeaway, is massively important to allow the rest of the golf swing to function. Let's get stuck into what we need to do to make that work correctly, consistently, every time. So the takeaway, massively important. Loads of golfers get the club in here. From there then, they tend to try and correct it in the top of the backswing and get this kind of compensatory move where the club tends to get cross-lined and then from there, steep on the downswing and cutting across the golf ball or early extend and flick at the golf ball if they're more talented. We don't want those compensatory moves. We want to get the golf club flowing naturally and efficiently. Not perfect, because perfect's difficult, but we certainly want to reduce the amount of compensations in the golf swings to make you a more consistent golfer. So the takeaway, massively important. We're gonna look quite closely at the hand action in takeaway. The hand action is a majorly important thing. What I see on the lesson tee on a daily basis is golfers that will get the golf club working behind them. So the club head will be behind their butt line in the takeaway. 90% of the time, this is caused by over rotation of the wrist and arm. It can be the trail wrist or the lead wrist, but if we fix the lead wrist, the club will generally work into the position we want. Also, the golfers that tend to do this tend to have not enough what we would call radial motion of the wrist either. So don't get the early wrist cock as we would call it. They might call it wrist hinge, but wrist hinge is this action and wrist cock or radial is this action. So this is basically flexion. This is extension. So these fancy terms we can use or not use. What I'm really looking at today really is the glove and the logo. So as you can see here in my face on camera, the logo on my glove is visible, right? And it's just about visible. If I make a poor takeaway, that logo becomes very visible. So we're looking to keep the logo in the same relationship to my arm and club and shaft in the takeaway. When it gets back to about hip high, the logo will start to become a little bit more visible. But for the guys that roll the club in, we want to make sure this logo stays pointing down as long as we can. This helps promote the trail arm on top of the lead arm. This helps promote the hand path going in. It helps promote the club face getting into that slightly stronger position. We want it parallel with the spine, the leading edge. It helps promote those things. The guys that roll in tend to get the face very open, the club behind them, and they'll see here the logo of the glove changes dramatically. So we're looking for this position versus that position. And thinking about the logo is the key thing we're gonna to do to try and achieve that. We talked earlier about the wrist cock. Yes, ideally, we want some wrist cock happening here. So it's logo down to the ground and then thumb just starting to work up. That's what we're looking for for that P2 position. And ideally, we want the arms to lead this, not a one piece takeaway. The arms start, they move, they then drag the rib cage over to help that move. If I try and move everything in one go, you'll see how the club tends to work again behind me too much. There are a few guys obviously pick the club up and lose connection or pressure. You don't get the pressure between the arms and the pecs. That should be maintained. Once I said, as we start the swing, that then starts to keep the relationship correct. Again, I'll show you a poor one. Losing the connection, club coming in, club visible. The other way I describe it is imagine there's a light beam shining out at the end of the club. So that light beam wants to shine to your body. If that light beam goes to target too quickly, then basically you roll the club in. Let's try a shot and we're gonna try and keep that light beam and that glove logo facing down as long as we can. So 
So it, I have to be honest, it felt a little bit different to my normal swing. I was trying to over exaggerate it a little bit maybe, but it definitely felt a little bit more kind of hooded and closed and left wrist down. So it felt nice though. I hit, hit happy with a shot. It went nice and straight, but that's the feeling I have. And that's the way I'd want you to take that to the course. I like you on the course to have one backswing thought. I like you to have the finished thought. So two nice thoughts for the golf course work well. One thing that works ideally on whatever you need to on the back would be the ideal scenario. So if your takeaway is great, it might be something else. But this would be for me, the way to address your takeaway if you're a roller inside or a flipper inside on the backswing. Okay, so there's my take on the takeaway. Stop rolling inside, get the club working back correctly. It, for me, is crucial. So if you've enjoyed the video, please click like and share the video. Also, please post questions or comments down below. They really help. And they also help me drive the channel in the correct direction to help you. So if you haven't already followed or subscribed, hit my logo down below and join me in my journey and let me help you improve your golf. Thank you for tuning in today at the Forest of Arden. Hope to see you back here real soon. Happy golfing in the meantime.